Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the podcast. This week, I was given the wonderful opportunity to be able to catch up and have a little conversation about video, why it's powerful, why content is valuable, and also why networking is powerful with a lovely gentleman who I met uh, through the Boardroom Network, uh, who's known as Lex McKee. He's another video marketer and uh, other 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 many things as well and does lots of lovely work for tbn as well so thank you so much for him for joining me we talked about as i say lots of uh, motivational stuff some of the misconceptions around creating content and how and why as well so uh yeah thank you so much for coming back if you did enjoy this episode and you would like to see more make sure to be subscribed i'd love to hear what you think in the comment section down below and i'll let lex sort of introduce a little bit about what he does and his uh quote unquote claim to fame and uh, i'll see you very very soon My name is Lex McKee. I am a published author of, uh, well, my claim to fame was 15 minutes as the Accelerated Trainer, which was a book for trainers. Hated school with a passion until I found a couple of teachers who had that fire and they, um, they ignited my interest for their subjects because they were so excited about them. And I realized that learning is supposed to be fun, supposed to be easy. So I went on a bit of a crusade to make training for adults much more engaging, hence the book, The Accelerated Trainer. Uh, Then fell in love with video because I would see training uh, training seminar after training seminar delivering golden content. And I would say, have you recorded that? And they'd go, no. And I knew that I'd remember three points of which there were 37 brilliant points. So I started to realize that trainers need to build assets Uh, as indeed do network meetings, where you can review the learning time and time again, especially if you're a reflective type person. So I love writing, I love the edited life. When I get too excited, I can't get a sentence out without stumbling. So to be able to record top quality audio, top quality video, and to write stuff is my idea of paradise, because when I've snuffed it, all those assets will still be there for anybody who cares. Absolutely. Thank you very much for coming on and joining me, Lex. Now, how for those who don't know, how did we kind of meet? How did we sort of, it's a nice segue into, you know, one of the main topics I think of today, um, or something I wanted to talk about definitely was, you know, networking and what the value is for a business owner. But how did, how did we sort of connect initially and how did we meet and how did, you know, and then how, how is networking in, in that respect for you? Have you found it? it? There's a saying, isn't there? It's not who you know, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And one of my great friends, Chris Wilkinson, talks about not networking to a room, but networking through a room. So you and I share a common person in the the likes of Jules Whale, this amazing therapist who does video with you and has worked with me on several projects as well. And she's part of the Boardroom Network, of which I've been a, a column, I suppose, for seven years, six or seven years, doing the video, doing the blogs doing all those ways of taking members' insights like Jules and making sure that they're there for people to review over and over again. So the doorway was a whale of a doorway. Indeed. And, uh, you know, we're very fortunate to be able to do what we do and be able to, you know, share that knowledge and, and have people, you, you know, like yourself be able to document that and showcase it. I mean, I think the initial question that comes from that is for those people who are maybe new to business or new to networking and, you know, who don't know, you know, a lot of I think the misconceptions is always oh, really scary. Right. It's this big intimidating thing, especially as, you know, transition to this online sphere um, through COVID. I think there was a lot of like people who were like, oh, my God. How can I how can I possibly do that? I mean, what advice would you and what, you know, in your experience with TBN, but also I imagine in other networking groups as well, have you sort of would you give to people who are like, no, I don't do networking, that's too scary? Fair. I can take the fear away as you can uh, instantly by saying, Don't make it about you at all. Forget about you. Focus on them. So few people get listened to in life. If you were genuinely to take an interest in somebody else's business and what surrounds their business, they would regard you as the best person in that networking meeting. And if I'm listening to you, Carlton, and not thinking about what I'm going to say next, there's so much processing power available in the brain that I can dedicate as a gift to you that you will provide the content for where the conversation will go next when you run out of steam. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's one of those things as, you know, as someone who runs a podcast and someone who does a lot of content, it's something that I see as second nature. But for, for a lot of people, it's not. And that's why, you know, we're very fortunate in the respect that we can support quite a lot of people, one of them being Jules, in their content creation journey and in, in how they go about actually creating their content and also the language that goes alongside that. But also, I think it's one of those things that you'll kind of develop in time i mean have you found in your own journey that your content that you were say creating at say the start of when you were you know joining tbn and you started working with tbn has evolved since you started you know because you said you've been with tbn for seven uh, seven or so years i mean i imagine there's been quite a development and quite a journey in in that you know one of the greatest gifts of the universe to me uh, and if i get distracted listeners you won't be able to see this but we've got our pet hedgehog it's not we not our pet he's the one that sort of adopted our garden He's just trundling past now. And he, he went past me the other day and I thought, oh, how cute. The hedgehog is going to just brush past my feet. Whereupon he took a chunk out of my foot <laughs> to see what it tasted oh, like. Oh so oh I shall um, be paying a little bit of attention to Hogstar. As I say, so if you hear a, if you hear a yell and there's suddenly a cut, it's because Lex's toe has been eaten. Mmm, <laughs> humans, we love them. Um, but that's a good example, isn't it, of having our own businesses. The fact that I can uh, network with you via OBS and Zoom this afternoon from the luxury of the garden, enjoying the birds around me and the hedgehog. Uh, that's, um, that's something to be very grateful for, time, freedom. Anyway, my message has changed enormously over time. Um, really as a result of the ecosystem, which is networking. So they say your network is your net worth. And as I've got deeper and deeper and deeper into the network, I feel my net worth of understanding the other members in the network has changed my message to be more suited to what they require. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly. I think it's one of those things where, and we talk about this in marketing a lot, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you don't necessarily want to talk to everyone. You want to talk to every, all of the right people and and you will but by doing that you will alienate another set of people right no matter what you do because by you having an opinion on something the people who don't agree with that opinion are going to be alienated or they're going to be like oh i don't know about that you know if i say oh i love the color blue but lex hates the color blue okay now we're not okay on the color blue right because because there's a there's a there's a disagreement there but the but the point there is yes that's obviously a stupid example but the point is that if you have an opinion on something and then you make it clear that that's your opinion then suddenly you're into this world of you know i think they say don't talk about religion or don't talk about politics and the reason why is because they're quite polarizing views that, that you know you can be very polarized in in those things in content i mean what in your experience would you suggest people do if you know they've been like all oh, my my marketing team's been saying i need to do video or i need to do content and i need to start you know talking about what i do but i have no idea where to start what would you what would you say to people go and buy building a story brand by donald miller the best business book i've ever read in my life or get the audible version it just gives you a framework to make your customers the hero to take you into a different role as the guide so i know carlton if you were working with somebody who was frightened of going on video for the first time you will have a process you've got a map that will help them shine in front of the camera or behind the camera you know they don't have to go on the camera all the time so to have that expertise is your role and then the next part of your role is to shine the light completely on them to make them the hero of their own stories a story that is clear to their target customers because as soon as you confuse you lose I've, I've got a lot of experience of confusing people and it's not as much fun as some people seem to think it is you know it needs to be a really really simple message i do video for small businesses at a really good price for those who want to do regular videos week on week off yeah. you know I'm, I'm not saying that's my message but no, that example, kind example, of clarity yeah. yeah it's a very key example you know it's about understanding who is it you're trying to talk to but then also how do you add value to them right because there's no point there's no point having a lot of like what i called or what one would call fluff um in a piece of content if it's not valuable because you know otherwise then it's just fluff 
right? Like we could sit here and be like, oh, we're just going to talk about the hedgehog and we're going to talk about birds and we're going to talk about this, but that's not going to be valuable. So, you know, that's why having a structure more structured or, or having a more interviewer and interviewee relationship here is going to be valuable because it allows me to sort of push push the conversation in a way which I feel is going to be valuable for the audience that are going to consume this content, right? I mean, and talking about which, have you had, you know, a lot of experience, I imagine you have, with talking about what you do? And has that message also evolved as you've changed what, either what you do, but also as you've gained more knowledge around what it is that you do and how it's important to your ideal customer? Yes, yes. I, I bought into quite a few of the online people who said that YouTube was the way to go, and I still agree with that, and video is the way to go. I think what they often have done is overstate how easy it is and so i for several years was quite excited about yeah you've got a mobile phone you can do video get a decent lavalier microphone like this and you've got almost broadcast quality certainly enough for social media that will wow people as if just making a video was going to get people to sign up to their youtube channel and give them tons of business and i think as i've gone on i've realized that there is such a place for professionals like you and me to take some of that pain off people. I mean, if you don't know about the right thumbnail, you will be judged by the cover of your book. We talk about you judge a book by a cover. A video is clicked on or not clicked on by a stranger on the strength of the thumbnail. Now, who in their right budget is gonna invest in Photoshop if they're only gonna use it for thumbnails? They might do Canva or something like that. But we can come to someone like you or me and go, look, Here's my message, here's my brand colours, here's my brand font. You know the chops here. Can you do that for me? And we'll do in 10 minutes what would take them two hours. Now that's a sensible return on investment. Yeah, exactly. I think there's sometimes a misconception around, especially when you do video and professional video, because there is a misconception that it is really expensive. And it, and it can be expensive. Yes, it can. It depends on what you're going to do. If you're going to build a small bridge, it will be less expensive than a large bridge, right? It, it, you know, it just depends on what you're going to do. But the, the, main, the main caveat there is, you know, it's not always necessarily about you make more money, you get more clients. It's also how much time do you save? How much more visible are you? Because if you're visible and you save a lot of time, then you will be able to then actually take on more clients and actually be able to have more networking time and actually be able to have more one-to-one -one time, which, as many people who network know, that's how you use networking to the best of the ability and that's how you get work from networking. It's not turn up to the networking event and then expect loads of people to go, actually, Colton, we would love for you to do videos. And I'm not saying that doesn't happen because it does. But it's a lot more of a nuanced process and it's a lot more of around, you know, and we've done some content in the past and we'll be doing more content in the future about, you know, what your networking one minute is and, and how to craft that and, you know, some of the strategy-esque stuff you can do in it. But for people who are just starting out in networking, as you say, don't focus on what your networking one minute is because it's going to bog down the concept of you getting into the habit of acting on the concept of going to networking in the first place and getting the idea is out there that you are visible and you you are this is you know in the opportunity where you can say well this is what we do this is how we do it this is why we do it you know i mean for those talking about what networking one minutes i mean how have you crafted yours and how did you sort of come up with that because i think it's always an interesting conversation because some people go well i don't <laughs> i just don't um but then also other people are like well we've sort of structured it around these are the things we're trying to look for or these are the things that we're trying to get referrals on or this is the kind of we're trying to educate that that but those potential people or those potential business owners or those potential collaborators or those potential clients or customers to understand how we can be valuable to them and that's why i'm really glad that you came up with you know when we asked about networking about it's about the other person because when you have a networking one minute in my opinion it should be started with hi i am such and such and I do such and such, but then you should go instantly into, well, this is why it's valuable for you, Lex, or this is why it's valuable for this business or this business. You know, I mean, how did you come up with your networking minute, one minute, if you if you did come up with it in a strategized way? Um, I change it from time to time based on the kind of service that I think would best serve the boardroom network, which is my only network. Um, but I use the same structure and it's a structure I used to teach used to teach civil servants how to think very very quickly on the spot when they were put under pressure and that might be a camera thrust in their face from a news team or it might be a minister walking down a corridor and almost in that moment saying to them 
can you give me an update on that report you've been working on? Fluster, fluster, fluster. And the process we use is very, very succinct, very structured. You always have just one point. Normally what I do is I take the camera off the tripod and get the tripod in front of the lens here and go, this is it. The camera has one focus, boom. So what's the point you want to be remembered for? But for that camera to have a steady focus, it must have a minimum of three legs on the tripod. So if I was to say, you should get into video because it's going to give your business uh, prominence on the internet. And maybe that wasn't as eloquent as I want to say, but if that was my main focus, get into video so that people can see you, hear you, and respond to your business. Because if you don't, your competitors will. There might be my first legs, because if you don't, your competitors will. It's really easy to do this. What would have cost you a hundred thousand pounds just 10 years ago will cost you less than a grand now. And in your very network, there's someone to help you. So then you take those three things and you return them back to the focus. So your first action point is to find someone in your network who's going to help you take those first steps in video. Set up the right equipment for you for under a grand and make sure that you're the ones heard. Because a teacher said to me at school, do you know what? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. I don't think that was a compliment. I don't think so either, but I completely agree. I think it's one of those things where whenever you have a targeted point that you want to make, so I'll use yours as an example, we, we create video, right? Uh, you know, it's that's the goal. That's the thing we want the person to remember. But then it's also then reinforcing that point. A lot of what you're talking about just then is reinforcing what it is that why is video value, but what does it do for that client, right? So it's building a triangle around it. And I think, you know, a lot of it is one of those things where you'll get it through trial and error as well. Like everyone thinks they're going to go into a networking meeting and they're going to have their one minute and then they're suddenly going to get loads of work. No. Firstly, consistency is what probably the most important thing in networking because it ups your visibility in measurably especially if you're a content creator as well and you're creating content because what people will end up doing is they'll go oh i've seen colton five weeks in a row at tbn for example and then they'll go okay who the hell is colton because i keep seeing him and he keeps talking about why video is amazing this and this and this now if i was a videographer and a you know video strategist that didn't have any content it's uh, well i can't really believe much in my content if we're in a position where i don't have it and I'm not talking about it and I'm not creating content. And that's where some clients or some people sometimes misunderstand when it comes to where video sits. Video is the backbone of what you say. It reinforces what you say. It reinforces, yes, I know what I'm talking about because I've got 15,000 videos online or I've got a thousand, whatever it may be, right? You know, right? Oh, you've just scared most of the yeah, audience. Yeah, 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 <laughs> that's a good question. How many videos you, do you need? <laughs> you don't You don't need that many. I've been doing it a very long time and for very way too long. And if you know where to look, you can go back to when I was 12. But that's not the point. The, the principle is being consistent, right? And it's being consistently creating valuable content now the question i think will come from that lex and i'll throw it back to you is how do you know what's valuable how do you how do you come across those value pieces of content like what what, what is valuable right because some people go oh my life's boring though lex i can't create content my life's boring i think that's where the story branding comes to the fore again for me so if you think of star wars luke skywalker was potentially a hero he wasn't a hero to start with he was a normal person with a problem with a discomfort i've got to get off this planet i'm so bored i don't want to be farm boy for the rest of my life i want to fly into space and he needed to meet a guide with a plan who was going to give him the capabilities whether that be the jedi skills or the right contacts princess leia and r2d2 etc and that again is another area where the networking comes to the fore because you need to be out there to meet the people who are going to move you forward. So I would be looking for a problem in the network where I could solve and thus add value by solving the problem. Ease their pain like field of dreams, you know, ease is pain. Is there something there that I can make easier? The, the root of the word facilitate is to make facile, to make easy, to make simple. Uh, or is there a way I can amplify? And that's where I love entrepreneurialism. You know, the, the definition of an entrepreneur is someone in, who is going to elevate the performance of something from one level to another. 
So what would it take to 10 times the profitability of your business without 10 times in the time you pour into it? Now, if I could show that to someone, even though they may not be in pain, suddenly the eyes might light up and they go, yes, wouldn't it be great to have that kind of cash flow without taking up even more of my life? Yeah, I completely agree. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, I use a really key example. Whenever you're training a member of staff and it's something that you do repeatedly and you're, you're like, well, these are the procedures that we follow, etc. Well, you could film the video once. It's going to take you maybe an hour, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. But then you've done it, right? So then you don't need to spend that four hours ever again, right? We all get 24 hours in a day. And if you spend the four hours today, you never have to spend the four hours again unless you want to revisit it right i recommend you should revisit it after a couple of years because it will look dated it will feel outdated etc and also the information might not be correct anymore but the point is you can save a huge amount of time and therefore money right so it's actually the opportunity cost of doing it right because otherwise without it you're going to have to retrain every single member of staff especially ever like in a, in, a, in a larger business where you have a lot of turnover of staff and you have to train a lot of staff quickly it's one of those things where why don't you just digitize all of them digitize all the videos take I don't know, two weeks, two months, whatever it is, however long you're going to do, work with someone like me or Lex to be able to do that again, cut that time down so you get the high level quality you get. You know, you don't have to worry about is a camera charged? You don't have to worry about does the mic, is the microphone on and are we recording audio? You don't need to worry about how is it lit? Where should we, where should we frame it? How should we sit? Where should we, what should we talk about, etc. Because that's why you bring in someone who's a professional because they can, then it's their problem to worry about is the camera battery charged? Is the microphone recording? Do we have audio going in here? how are we doing it what the language is so that's why you pay us to do it because it saves you time and then you can just focus on on right okay so i've got a video shoot this day okay cool and then what happens is you don't even have to worry about it after that you can go and do the rest of the business and you can go network and you can run the re- and you be ob- ob- you know objectively doing whatever it is the business requires you to do and then whilst that's happening we are then editing the videos. We're then helping you produce the videos and then we'll show you the finished videos and then hopefully it will be, or can we tweak a couple of bits perhaps or not? And then you have your training videos and then you're like, okay, whenever a new member of staff goes, you can, you can just go, okay, these are the videos I need you to watch. Okay, fantastic. We're going to do a quiz at the end. Okay, fantastic. We know that you know all the information. All good. Training done. You have very little input with that training. Now that might be a balancing act that you might prefer to have certain personal aspects of training to build the rapport with the with that person but it at least opens up the opportunity for you to take those big boring chunks of death by powerpoint kind of lectures and digitize them and make them more appealing more engaging and arguably stronger as a piece because we can establish the content we can establish the language we can say well why are we putting this in you know we could cut it into smaller chunks you know depending on what we're doing but I think the caveat there and, and the main thing there is that's a very a very specific training example, but the same would be true when, you know, my next question was going to be about marketing. The same would be true whenever you're talking about marketing and whenever you're talking about what you're doing. I mean, what what would you say is the best thing for people to do who, you know, maybe are new in marketing or, you know, for example, back in lockdown, a lot of us were talking about, you know, in marketing, we were like, look, you need to continue to talk about what you're doing. You need to continue to be marketing, et cetera. And a lot of businesses, there were two businesses I found that were like, one was like, yeah, let's keep going, let's keep going, let's keep going. Maybe, we, maybe they pulled the budget down a bit and maybe they've been a bit more cautious, which you've got to do that in business. Sometimes you have to, to stay alive, but they didn't stop. That was the thing. Right? Maybe they were like, okay, well, instead of doing four videos a week, uh, a month now, we're only going to do one. We're only going to do two. But that's going to be a very strategized video. Okay, fine. Great. Fantastic. But then there was the other kind of businesses. Where, oh, we're just going to wait for this to fly, go over and blow over. But then that took then that took month, and then a month passed, and another month passed, and then another month passed, and another month passed. So what would you say to people who either are concerned about spending money on marketing now, and you know because they're like actually we've you know been on hard times because of COVID or because of lockdowns or or etc. or just because business isn't going as well as they would like, that they're kind of hesitant on the concept of spending money on marketing, not even necessarily video, but marketing in general. I would um would recommend Seth Godin. If you need to catch the vision for investing in yourself and in your future, uh, Donald Miller, Building Your Own Story Brand is, is the most useful business book I've ever read. But Seth Godin is my spark. And he, he is burned into my consciousness. He says, your art must ship. Your art must ship. It doesn't matter if the whole world is falling apart. Your art must ship. And it's a bit like a promise to yourself that you keep where you continue 
to produce those marketing messages, that good content that is your art, that is unique to you. And as soon as you let that go, I mean, there are competitors out there who won't let it go, so you're instantly behind. And the other thing is, is use everything. I don't know if you're familiar with Neil Gaiman, the author. He, um, he did Star, was it Stardust, I think it was? That was one of his. He's just a really interesting thing. He never went to college and he was asked to do an address to the University of the Arts, which we can get your listeners the, the link to. It's the most motivating speech I've ever heard. And he basically says, an alligator bites off your leg, make good art. You get a letter from the tax people, make good art. Wife runs off with circus freak, make good art. Take everything that happens to you and build it into your message because your customers who are buying your widgets are also going through those dramas. And if they go, you know, there's something about this brand that I love. You know, these, these are deeper people than I thought. This is not just a transaction. This is a transformational relationship and I like it. I like the cut of their cloth. Um, I, th I think then everything that happens to you becomes a catalyst. Everything is exciting. You know, whether it's the hedgehog trundling around the garden or the, the bonkers birds or the neighbour doing whatever they were drilling in the background there. Everything can become utilised to serve your better future. And that's an entrepreneurial mindset. I completely agree. And I think it's one of those things, you know, like, you know, one of the, I would argue the greatest, one of the greatest marketers at the moment is Gary Vaynerchuk. Very, very known in the marketing world. Very, very good at what he does. And, you know, he talks about when people ask him that question, he's like, document, don't create. And the reason why he says that is because it removes the concept of you needing to think about what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Because if you're in like a sales conversation or if you're in a conversation with a friend or you're in a conversation now, for example, um, you know, the, the value which we will add, we will we will do passively without thinking about it, especially if you do it a lot, because you won't even think about it. But also it's a very subjective. So there might be like a very nuanced thing that we said here, hopefully not about the hedgehog eating Lex's toe, but anyway, um, in this podcast that one person will take huge amounts of value from and the, you know, someone else won't necessarily but it's not up to the creator to decide what's valuable it's up to the audience it's up to the people consuming they're the people who decide what's valuable they're the people who decide how you're what what to talk about and that's why you know when i was lucky enough to be able to give my talk at tbn i i really wanted to you know set the groundwork on content but then just ask what people wanted to know because i could have sat there and i could have talked for hours about video but there's no point if no one felt it value felt it was going to be valuable and that's why i was like well you know i would love to take some questions and, and that's why i think that the tbn ending parts of the you know when people give to give some content to those who haven't been tbn at the end of tbn whenever you give an opportunity to give a presentation you're also invited at the end for the last half an hour or the extra half an hour of the of the networking session to also have questions asked to you from the people who were there and listening and who have the time to and i think that's the most valuable part because that's where we can go directly to that pain point that consumer problem that potential client problem that customer issue and say well this is how we would tackle it this is why we would tackle it this way you know i think one of the questions i was asked was how to become confident or how do you you know why do you dislike what if you dislike how you look on camera you know and uh, you know that's a really really common question and i think it's one of those things where you especially when it's like you're new to video or you know people are scared about coming on a podcast or they're scared about doing video or scared about doing networking if you do it anyway you'll grow because you're going to develop into into the person that you feel you need to to be able to grow into that situation but also it's something which once you push yourself outside your comfort zone your comfort zone naturally gets larger and it's one of those things where it will then stay larger because you've expanded it's and it's expanded and expanded and expanded so you know all you have to do is the first step is always the hardest so take the first step and then worry about the rest afterwards because what you'll find is as you gain small momentum it's like doing small activities at the start of the day to build your momentum for the day so if you've got like for example me as a really good example if you've got massive edits to do or massive complicated interviews or filming or large productions or whatever it is then write those four emails you need to do the, like one of the first work things you do for the day because what it's going to do is you can you can feel accomplished already because it's like okay it's 8 30 7 30 9 30 whatever it is i've already i've already done 
the admin related activities that I had to do this morning. Fantastic. Okay, great. So now we there. Now what? Okay, so now I'm going to get a camera ready for a shoot. Now I'm going to do the pre-production for a shoot. Or now I'm going to look over the pre-production if it is the shoot day, for example. And then you're going to establish, okay, well, what's the goal here? Maybe you'll check in with your read through the client emails or it says, you know, you're building that momentum in whenever you do anything. It's the same when you do anything. And I think, you know, for a lot of people, you know, when you do fitness, when you do uh, personal growth, when you do better, business development growth, anything, it's about building that momentum. I mean, have you found that, you know, from, and it's the same with marketing, have you found that as you've understood how to grow momentum and, and, and building that momentum with your clients or with yourself, that it's really, really helped you actually do it more? I think particularly in the current crisis that we've had, a lot of people have lost attachment to the timeline. So I've, I've heard people say, what day is it today? Because they've lost the framework. And in that moment, they've lost momentum. And so I'm a huge fan of making appointments with myself in the diary, making commitments which are regular along the timeline to maintain that momentum and promises to myself. So at the moment I do a daily inspirational video, that's non-negotiable. Every day I will ship that art and I will ship that art in a standard that I'm 80% happy, happy with. Um, because that's a promise I've made to myself. Now, if I can keep those promises to myself and keep my momentum, then I can help clients keep their promises to themselves so they have that one video a week or that one video a month, that blog, that podcast, that they framed as being of value to themselves. Oh, absolutely i completely agree and i think it's one of those things i mean and that's kind of i'm glad you mentioned that because it what jumped to mind to me was you know it's about striving for perfection but also not letting it get in the way because the, a lot of the time when we're a videographer or when you have any level of art that you genuinely care about and you you know you wholeheartedly care about you know whenever we take on a project we genuinely care about the outcome we genuinely care about how it looks and how it sounds and how it feels but the thing is you can't let perfection get in the way because you'll never release anything nothing will ever get shipped so quote unquote because you'll always gonna be like it can be better it can be better yes it can be but you know i think there was a psychological study i can't remember who by but they basically cut a room in half and it was a, a group an art an art an art an art class right and one one half was told you can paint as you have both have two weeks but one can only paint one one canvas and take two weeks on that canvas the other said you can you can paint as many canvases as you like and learn every time and go and go and go and go and go. At the end of the two weeks, we'll mark them, we'll have a look and see what the difference is. And the and what they found was the the what the side of the group or the side of the class that were able to paint, learn, go again, paint, go, learn again, so on and so on, were able to come up with a better piece because they were able to do it, look back on it, reflect on it, add in what they wanted to make better, and so on. And they carried on going until the end of the two weeks. But the problem happened was with the other side of the group or the other side of the class that were only able to do one canvas was they were spending so much time and so much energy looking at every little nuance and they were like oh well, what if I do this pit here and what if I do this bit here they ended up actually falling short because they didn't have that exploratively time to explore an idea to the point where actually you find out it's a terrible idea or not because you need to get to a point of actually creating something before you can realize that it's not a very good idea or not and I mean uh, I mean let me throw back to you I mean the the question I think was going to be asked is how do you strive for perfection but also you know when do you know the point is that you can be like actually I need to just release this so I can learn from the feedback and get my audience's feedback because as we just discussed earlier it's not up to you to find out whether it's valuable it's up to your audience but that, again this is another reason why you need to actually execute and put stuff out there into the world to find out whether it is good or not yeah yeah with the right target group uh, just a, just a little aside <clears throat> If you haven't seen folks listening to this Gary Vaynerchuk's first, first video, just do a YouTube search for Gary Vaynerchuk first video and you will be so encouraged. Is it a good video? Technically, no. Is it a good video? Yes. All his enthusiasm and passion and knowledge flow into the camera. The audio is just like, really? And yet he shipped his art he got an audience of people who were enthusiastic about wine 
And look at him now, he's got to be up there with Tony Robbins as one of the most inspirational, sought after speakers on the planet. So go back to the beginning and have a look at what they were like, because I can guarantee with Carlton's help, you're going to be better than that, <laughs> technically. So just get started. Um, time's a real friend for me. So when I know I've got to ship my art, that's the main promise, this art must ship. If I haven't got the time, then the 80% is my cutoff. I go, I'm 80% happy with that, boom, go. You know, you know what it's like, you edit something, you publish it, you compress it, and you see a spelling error. It's just like, oh no, no. And everything within me wants to go back and just correct that. But I've got another meeting and you go, do you know what, most people won't care. I care, I might table it for improvement so I can then do another video on YouTube later or replace it on Vimeo. But in terms of getting the message across, this must ship. It's a bit like catching a train. We must catch that train. Working in radio really helped me. Uh, I did a breakfast show for a couple of years. And there, there is no negotiation there. You must be there. You must ship. You must get your timing right to a hundredth a tenth of a second, not a hundredth of a second. I won't, won't exaggerate it here. You know, the news goes out on the hour. And um, that I found amazingly liberating as a creative because I couldn't argue with those things, I couldn't negotiate with those givens, that gave me something I didn't have to give any attention to because it had to be done. And the rest of the time you go, right, how can we add the Gary Vaynerchuk spark to this? How can we add some personality to the brand? Yeah, and at the end of the day, I mean, you know, and this is to anyone who's, you know, starting to think about doing content and only has a phone and et cetera, you know, at the end of the day, your personality and what you're saying is more important than how it looks and how it sounds. And if you're really going to go into it, how it sounds is actually more important than how it looks. Because if you have if you have bad audio, people are going to turn off. They'll turn, they literally will just turn off in five minutes because they won't they won't. It's the way our brains are wired, right? Like if it sounds good and, it, and we like the sound of it, it, sounds rich and it sounds good, you know, strong audio like radio. That's why radio is so successful because it sounds rich, it sounds great. You know, you can hear that radio voice. And ironically enough, you know, a lot of people and Lex has done it, but a lot of people, you know, when they hear me networking because I'm normally at my home office, which just has my condenser mic and everything we're talking into here, and it's like, oh, we love your microphone, and I'm just like, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a, it, it's that thing, but it's the reason why they love. It is because it, they they can connect with me because they hear all the little nuances they hear the depth they hear the strength they hear the different tones and the don't tonalities that you can't really get from like other non-condenser microphones you can't get the level of depth you can't get the level of you know you just can't it's, it's the emotional side of it i think i think is the main thing i think that's what the connection um you know from what i found as well and i think that's the difference between someone who understands audio and you can you just put the mic close to your face and it will sound better than it did if it's on the other side of the room right there you go quick quick tip on audio but the the, the main principle is as i say the content itself what you're saying how you're saying it, how you're coming across your energy is actually the most important thing because everything else you can make better by bringing in a professional right it will sound better and look better and be lit better if a professional does it then you will but if you can't if you don't even charismatically have a strong personality and, and know what to say and how to say it, not necessarily like all in nuance, but if you don't have that level of passion in what you're talking about, there's absolutely no chance that I'm going to be able to get out of you or Lex is going to be able to get out of you when we put you in a situation which is uncomfortable, like talking to a camera or like talking on a podcast. It's now comfortable for me and I imagine comfortable for Lex. But the only reason why is because we've literally done it a billion times. That's the only reason why. At the start, we were the same as you. We went, oh, uh, this is weird. Oh, this is not, this is not, uh, what, the, what, oh, uh, no, I don't know about this. Oh, Mumsterdam and the squeaky voice. Well, I'd like to share yeah. with you today yeah. what we're yeah. going to talk about. <laughs> yeah. 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 Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and it happens to everyone. But, the, the, you know, the thing is, you're never going to be able to connect with your audience in a way that video allows if you never do that first video. Right. If you if you it, or, or, you know, I'll use the example of networking from earlier. If you never go to that first networking meeting and get the, oh, I don't feel good about this. Oh, I don't know how I should come across that, that bit. If you never get through that bit, you're never going to benefit from doing networking. You're never going to benefit from creating content. You're never going to benefit from anything. So get through those bits and then start building up your confidence and your self-belief and, and et cetera. And everything goes alongside it to then be in a position where you can start benefiting, to then to be in a position where you can invest time, money or energy or all three into what you're doing, what your business is doing and how your business is doing it to, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully become more successful and become, 
more fulfilled in your life which is the which is the in my perspective the more important thing when it comes to success it's actually not about i make x amount of money yes we have to make x amount of money to survive but the the fact of the matter is you should be fulfilled and you should be what is your level of happiness right what is your level of fulfillment what do you feel you're doing and why do you feel you're doing it because if your only driving factor is money then you won't do what it takes to make that extra money you'll be able to connect or be able to you know come across as well as you could on camera or talk about what it is because it will feel fake it will it won't feel genuine you know in, in in my experience it won't because you can tell the difference between someone who's talking genuinely from the heart i love my business i love what i do i love why i do it and someone who's just pl- what we would call playing for the camera you know what i mean do you want is there anything you want to add to that before we um we we start wrapping up lex i've got a friend called kim so whose catchphrase is be more you and you may have heard the wit who said you know be yourself because everybody else has already taken i don't i don't think there is any wisdom whatsoever in people being frightened of being themselves you know to be yourself is your gift your art to the universe so just have a look at yourself and see if you can amplify that and really engage with people because if people don't like you when you you are yourself they're the wrong client you don't want to be working with them i promise you so be yourself and then the universe how many seven billion people nearly eight billion people on the planet now uh, you'll find your tribe yeah if you're consistent yeah, with your message they'll they'll come to you if you build it they will come absolutely no i completely agree i mean the the final question i had for you before we would do the final wrap up was going to be you know how would you and how do because arguably some people would say we're competitors i would argue we're not um and the reason why i would say that is because i'm going to do it my way you're going to do it your way we're going to do it different approaches we're going to tackle it differently we're going to we're going to well firstly geolocated wise it might make more sense for that client to work with you because you're closer to them than me for example and vice versa but even from a personality standpoint and an approach standpoint, I would say that we're going to tackle it differently. And that's why we're not competitors, because we're not going to do the same thing. And also the video is not going to look the same. You can hire five different videographers and the videos will be absolutely different entirely. And there's nothing wrong with that. Pick people whose style you like, people who you resonate with and people who also the key point there is, in my opinion, anyway, pick people who is going to get the best out of you personally, you people who you can build rapport and trust with because if you trust that person and that videographer they will be able to get the best out of you on camera and that as we've discussed previously is what is going to be the difference between a great video and just a good video because any video because because any videographer can make a good video but it takes a lot more to make a great video i mean what would people say to you that said oh content's your you know content's your competition especially as we network sometimes in the same room and we talk about the same thing <laughs> I would, I'm going to agree with you and disagree because I think that would be quite useful for our listeners. Of course, you're my competition. If, if a fee goes to you that doesn't go into my account, then you're my competition by the very, very laws of business. Cool. But I also agree, I mean, Bertie, Bertie's our other major videographer. He's bonkers in a really good way. Lovely, you know, lovely, there the there way, are certain, certain clients that need that he's off the wall and therefore massively engaging so if they've got a brand that needs to be spark 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 bertie's a good choice um indeed with me i've got a style in in final cut pro you're probably a premier man are you a premier man or i am indeed a premier you are a premier man it's a different workflow it's a different set of disciplines it's a look and a feel and it's, um, I, I get really called upon people to guide their script and guide the way that they express themselves. I don't know enough about how you're working with people, but rarely does a client come to me with go, here's a fait accompli, I'm ready to go. You kind of go, no, you're not. Let's think about how we might phrase that. You've used always several times there. I might do the wordsmith bit. So it's finding the chemistry, isn't it? I know you've got really good chemistry with jewels where you now are comfortable with each other and comfortable with the camera angles and you can draw the best out of each other. So I I would see you and I as stepping up a bit to the producer director frame where you're getting the best out of the right talent and the right script for 
your process. And that is way more exciting. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, as the company's grown, uh, you know, for those who've known the company for a long time, for a long time I was a kid with a camera. And, you know, I still I still use a camera, I do. But there's a lot of productions in, in today's a very good example. This morning we were hired to do some interview content for a local business. Um, you know, and me, and me and a member of my team went down and, you know, they my member of my team was touching camera. I didn't touch camera all day. Um, we ended up using my cameras, but that was just because it made more sense to make use my cameras. That was nothing more, nothing less. It was just just made more sense to do so. Um, but I w- my role there was legitimately just directing and producing. That was all I was doing. And you know, something which I found very valuable, especially as the company's grown, is the if you can justify it and if you can do it you'll get a better product because you can focus on the nuances you can focus on the language you can focus on helping that talent feel comfortable because the the gentleman that we were working with today was like i don't want to do it 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 the, literally even this morning he was like i, I don't want to do this I, I genuinely didn't want to be on camera i was like look you'll be fine like all you're having like the, all they have to think about it is you're having a conversation with me because that's all you're having a conversation with that's all you're doing we just happen to have two cameras there and they just and you just happen to be wearing a microphone at the same time that's all but the uh, and that's what i mean about the confidence level and the and the level of comfort and it's about how do you what role do you feel and how and how can you as a videographer or as a director or as a producer or as a content creator or as a video, whatever you want to call yourself you know how do you help that client feel comfortable that's the that's the reality and that's what you should be paid to do and that's what you should be paid to do if you can make their life easier that's what you should be paid to do you know and, and it comes back to what we were talking about at the very beginning which is saving you time effort and money if someone yeah of course someone could do video on their own of course they could video is not super challenging the uh, the the crux of video is put something in front of you you can film it press press a record button and then talk that's the crux of video but but the reality of the fact is there's so many other things that go along you know that go alongside that and 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 are important about that that you would take a long time to learn it if you were someone who who and also do you want to learn it if you want to learn it then i would argue do it yourself and learn it but don't hire someone in Right? Maybe talk to someone who does it and say, oh, how would you tackle this? Because most, most of the, I don't want to talk for Lex or, any, or, or Bertie or anyone else, but most of us would be like, actually, this is how we would do it and this is how we would suggest you do it because we want you to create better content because if you see the value in creating video long term, you're more likely to spend money on it, which means we're going to make money in the long term, which is why we do that, yes, but also we also want more people to create content and help, you know, from my side anyway, um, be able to showcase and, and talk about why they're special and what they do is is special as well. I mean, do you agree with that at all, Lex? Or, you know, what was your thoughts on that? It, it's about drawing out. Education is to draw out from someone, isn't it? They're, they're genius. And I'm reminded of that legendary story of the guy repairing boilers in uh, Manchester shipping and these giant ship's boilers. And they had a trouble with this beautiful bit of engineering. It just wasn't working. So they got one of the original engineers in. And he's got this little tap hammer. Tap, 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 tap. And after 10 minutes of tapping around, he went, tapped a pipe. And the whole thing worked properly. And so the shipping owner said, you know, send me uh, an invoice. So he sent him an invoice for £10,000. And he said, said, can you send me an itemised invoice? And he said, for tapping with the hammer, uh, two quid for knowing where to tap 9,998 and you and I know where to tap so once somebody's looking after the camera the sound and all that kind of stuff we can concentrate on the hero the talent listen to the nuances and go I like what you did there what would happen if you did do and all of a sudden their, their opportunities their possibilities their capabilities increase and I, I like the clients who hate video because after they've done it a couple of times, they become the nut jobs who just can't get enough. Yeah. Probably not yeah. the technical term to call them the nut jobs, but you know what I mean. Just, I've got to do another video because <laughs> I get yeah. really excited. Yeah, it's really about excited, it. and you know, and that's the thing. Like people do, and they will get really excited about doing video because video is a very exciting thing to do. And once you once you can utilize it, and you have the confidence to do it. It's great. It is. It is great to do. I mean, you know, I think that's kind of everything I wanted to discuss today with you, Lex. So thank you so much for the time. Firstly, but also, you know, I like to throw on the end. I mean, is there anything that you want to throw in topic wise, or is there a question that you want to ask me? Absolutely. Specifically, always, always have a call to action. I fell in love with many a beautiful 
girl at school, none of them I ever asked out. Guess what happened? <laughs> I didn't get the girl. Uh, it's because I was shy. It's a bit like doing a video. You've got to have a call to action for your audience. Otherwise, I might go, I really like the colour of your cloth. I love what you did. I've got a clue what to do. Tell them what to do. And that could be something that simple, be something like, simple drop like, drop us what you thought us below, below, below or yeah. give us a ring, give us a ring or check out sign the website, up to my email list, or sign up to your email list, list or, yeah. or etc. Et or, or even just drop, us, even a message, drop us a message, whatever it is. Whatever it is. And, you know, and that's and, where you know, the strategy aspect is what we specialise in is video strategy. Now what most people say is, you know, what you know, video strategy. The simple answer is understanding the framework in which you're putting the videos in and understanding where and how and why you're doing the videos in the first place. Because people come to me and go, marketing, they're like, oh, a marketing department said we should do video. Do and then my next question is, okay, question is, well, do you? <laughs> are you sure you want to do video? What do you think video is going to do for you? You do for you, exactly. Yeah. So subscribe to this podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. So you can hear me and me and Lex talk more about why video is amazing, and 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 we can and find out next week if Lex toe got eaten by a hedgehog, um, or not. But all jokes aside, thank you ever so much, Lex, for the time. I really really appreciate it, and uh, thank you for coming on. And where can people find you? Where's best to connect with you? If for those people who do just want to see and hear a little bit more about what you do and what you most do, of my you... clients are businesses. So LinkedIn, Lex McKee. There aren't any other Lex McKees that I've come across on LinkedIn. L-E-X, M-C-K-E-E, you will find me. And I will have a chat with you with glee. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much, good sir. Cheers. Thank you for joining me again, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you did enjoy that interview with myself and Lex McKee. Uh, we had a great conversation about all things entrepreneurship, video, and content creation as well. So thank you ever so much to him if you are listening back, Lex. Thank you ever so much for coming on once again. And thanks to you, the lovely audience people who are uh, consuming and have consumed 45 to 50 minutes of this amazing content. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. Uh, we've got some very interesting guests lined up uh, for the back end of this year um, as well and we're slowly but steadily getting towards 100 episodes which is a bit crazy to think about but I uh, really really appreciate the support on the episodes and uh, I look forward to sharing more with you very very soon so thank you so much for coming coming back and listening and I hope you did took some value from today's episode and I'll see you very very soon